Welcome everyone. Uh, a very, very good evening to all of you. We are super, super excited uh, for this uh, workshop. Um, so I'd like to um, give a warm welcome to all of you who've joined. Uh, so um, we will be talking all about NFTs through the next uh, few hours and you'll be in touch with most of the speakers who are NFT connoisseurs now. So uh, let me start by introducing myself. I'm Amisha Chaube. I uh, am the co-founder of Adva Studios. And uh, we always aim at uh, bringing a community of artists together. We have a studio space for artists and creative professionals in Okla in New Delhi. And uh, with me, we'll be moderating uh, Anubha. Anubha will tell you a little bit about Artsam. She's the co-founder at Artsam Studios and she has founded Artsam as well. Uh, so Anubha, can you please tell us a little bit about Artsam? I'm Anubha. I'm the co-founder co -founder for Artsam Studios and founder for Artsam.co. Amisha and I will be moderating the event today. Artsum is a community-based platform that aims at doing uh, everything to do with art. We, at, we aim at, uh, you know, filling the lack of knowledge and exposure. We are an all-inclusive platform to give opportunities to young and emerging artists to sell and market their works. Our uh, talk is one attempt um, to make some information headway in this new space called NFT. Okay, thank you so much, Anubha. Uh, I'll just quickly introduce our speakers. There'll be a more, um, you know, there'll be a more lengthy uh, introduction when their uh, talk starts. So first we have uh, Ishita Banerjee. She's an artist. She's based out of Canada. She uh, has transitioned uh, from being a conventional artist to being an NFT artist. Then we've got Vijay Kupchandani, who is a serial entrepreneur. He's big in the NFT uh, world and he does a lot of stuff uh, to uh, to educate people about NFTs as well. Then we've got Santanu Hazarika. He is a graphic artist and he has uh, recently done a lot of work in the NFT space. He's also been collaborating with a lot of brands as well as uh, a lot of uh, musicians as well for his works in the past. Then we also have a surprise speaker by the end of it uh, and we'll introduce him when he comes uh, online. So Ishita is an artist. She's based out of Canada. She uh, is the highest selling South Asian woman NFT artist. Uh, she has been creating history with NFTs for a while now. And um, Ishita, I'd like you to just uh, take on the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amisha. Um, yeah, my name is Ishita and uh, I'm a, I'm a convention, conventional artist, a traditional <laughs> a contemporary artist, uh, and I've been doing this for the past 25 years. And uh, it's just been, I think, 12 years that I've been in Canada now, and I've started my own brand called uh, Soul Curry Art. I go by the name of uh, Soul Curry Art, where I practice my, uh, my own art practice. And over the course of the last few months, and um, it was pretty much like late last year when I started hearing about NFTs, and that kind of got my interest peaked. I was wondering, what is this NFT? Why are people getting so excited about it? And that's when I, you know, I, I give myself a challenge to kind of um, try and learn about this space, learn about what is NFTs, why people are, you know, you know, so enthusiastic about it. And it was really early this year when it really took off in a big way. And I gave myself a little bit of time to really understand what the NFT space was and how I would, uh, you know, make my transition if I felt like it was a space for me, how I would make my transition inside this space. And it's been quite a remarkable journey over the last couple of uh, months. It's been, um, it's been very rewarding. It's been hard. It's been uh, a lot of learning. It's been a community building, but what it has done is it has opened up a creative fire that I did not know I had before. It's opened up a whole new dimension of exploring, of creating, of meeting people, of uh, it really, you know, just, uh, just, you know, just being able to express myself uh, and on a different kind of mechanism. So, yes, thank you so much. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'd love to talk to you about my journey from uh, being a contemporary artist into uh, into the NFT space. And it is not as hard as you think it is. I came in with absolutely no knowledge, no knowledge of crypto, no knowledge of what NFT was. But I took the time to really learn about this space and learned about, you know, what I can do in this space so that my work stands out rather than me fitting into the space. So that was what uh, my approach was when I came in. 
and it's been a it's been an amazing journey amisha i'm sure uh, and you were one of the trending creators as well um so tell us how um, you know i'd i'd now like to transition to how uh, you create digital works and then how do they convert it, get converted to nfts and uh, what do you really need to do to make a mark and how how does the nft uh, process pan out all right um if you have a completely traditional work of art on it on a on a medium like canvas or a, a piece of paper that you would you think is perhaps the best expression of your work you can definitely scan it you can take a very very high resolution photograph of it and then you can um, you know as soon as you do that it becomes a digital file and that could be made into an nft alternatively you can work a on a natively digital surface like what i'm doing right now on procreate or uh, you know add illustrator or anything it could be a photograph for example i mean it doesn't need to be an artwork it could be anything it could be a photograph and you could turn that into an nft and the process is very simple you just uh, because nfts are a new mechanism where uh, you have a tokenized id to every artwork that you're putting up which then gets locked into a blockchain so to generate this tokenized id and for people to buy it the the currency that is used is cryptocurrency and and there are different different blockchains that use different cryptocurrencies as uh, the most popular ones are bitcoin ethereum uh, polygon tezos so those are some of the some of the you know the currencies that are being used and um, you just have to you know some of the platforms that are, have nft marketplaces are uh, are free for all for anyone to join like opensea uh, some platforms are more selective in terms of how the you know the they accept people like foundation like known origin like makers place super rare so for that you need to put in an application process and once you get accepted then you you know follow the protocols and then um, you know put up your works of art so that's been my journey you can just put it up uh, you have a list price or an auction options in most platforms and then you just follow the instructions and um, and just work on that but to do that you need definitely because you're dealing with cryptocurrency one thing is that you need to understand is a little bit of you know um you know what are the what are the charges because when you put up an nft work there's something called a gas fee which is then you know a, a that is what you pay to have the your uh, work minted and by minting means that token id that is generated when you're actually putting up an nft and for that you need to pay a gas fee and that again is in cryptocurrency so having a digital wallet is a must and uh, one of the things that i did was i beginning before i even went into the nft space i try and understood what uh, nfts were i took the time to educate myself about what cryptocurrency is what is minting what are gas fees and i just learned the basics and then um, i felt the best way to learn was to jump in and try and you know both feet first and that's what i did i i tried my hand at it and 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 it worked yeah so um uh, what are what are the platforms that you do display on as an nft artist and which one are you the most comfortable with um are, are they are there some which uh, do not work for you how does an artist who's transitioning realize their uh, their audience or or where do they actually start um, you know if, if someone is new where do they start from when you absolutely new um i think uh, you don't it really doesn't depend on the platform uh, i would say just uh, we know when you're starting off as an nft artist first ask yourself why do you want to get into nfts are you in are you doing nfts because you want to explore a new mechanism or is it something that you've been hearing you just want to give it a try or is it something that you really believe in and you want to invest your time and energy and money also in it because it is it is cryptocurrency and you're going to be you know you're going to be paying in crypto as well so you just take your time i would say just take your time in understanding what the different platforms offer a lot of platforms you know i'm i'm very platform agnostic the what that means is i am on various platforms which give me different different uh, you know things on different platforms some platforms allow you to only put up one piece of work that means it's a one of a one unique one edition that is never to be repeated some platforms allow you to put up editions of your work some platforms allow you to um, have collections some platforms allow you to have the auction of a facility and some platforms also allow you to have just a list price so you can just put a list price there is no end time and whoever uh, is willing to pay that uh, currency uh, at that list price gets the, uh, gets the art of, uh, work of art 
and um, it's been um, and what do you need to know you just you just need to know how to open a digital wallet that's all you need to know you just need to make very high quality art which i'm assuming most of you already are doing uh, whether you are a 3d designer whether you are a two dimensional designer whether you come from a contemporary background if you're just drawing by hand you can absolutely digitize your work and turn them into nfts and put them up on these platforms and uh, especially platforms like OpenSea are uh, open to all. So anybody can, you know, apply, just open your profile and start uploading your work. And as an artist, uh, Ishita, I know you've uh, struggled a little bit with copyright issues in the past. And uh, how does this uh, solve, th does the NFT space uh, give you lesser trouble when it comes to copyright issues. Uh, can you talk about a, a little bit about what I already know, uh, which is that you struggled with copyright issues in the past? Yeah, I mean, because I was I was quite successful in terms of what I was selling. I got a lot of you know people ripping me off in the sense people were copying my work, things were being forged, and it was early last I started finding being stolen and being sold uh, through Chinese websites like AliExpress, Alibaba, and even Amazon. And, I, and I, was, I was devastated because, you know, I felt like this was what I had worked my entire life towards. And to see it being ripped off and sold for pennies on, on AliExpress just did not make any sense to me. And uh, although my artworks are copyright registered, it is registered, uh, you know, with the copyright uh, uh, authority here in Canada, but the, a lot of these companies get away by, because they're uh, overseas companies uh, and copyright laws vary differently between country to country. So I've had a big, big, uh, you know, issue just trying to get them to take it down. And then one person takes it down, 10 more people come up. So it's like, it's like an entire, you know, it's like a can of worms that I can't just seem to put back. So um, what NFTs did was it A, credits the, um, the creator. So it, there is provenance. So if I were to ever say that, you know, this is a particular piece of work that I have created and because it is on the blockchain, it tells you exactly who created it. And it's an original piece of art. So, you know, there are no, um, you know, there are no discrepancies there. Um, things, it's not a completely foolproof uh, system, but it does solve a system in the way that, you know, if ever there was a dispute and because it's a global marketplace and it is locked on the blockchain, the provenance is very, very transparent. And this was some of the one of the reasons that I definitely wanted to get in, get on board. Yeah, great. So, um, uh, so imagine that there's an artist who decides today that they are going to uh, dabble with uh, the NFT sphere. What is the first thing that uh, they need to know about NFTs? Uh, what are NFTs and digitally how to reach uh, more audiences once you've already created an NFT? They've made a profile on, say, like an open sea. And then how do they reach out to an audience? Uh, you know, what, what's your suggestion for that? So um, most of what NFTs are, are uh, uh, a tokenized way of, you know, authenticating your art on the blockchain your art is is the hero of the project of course but uh but reaching out to an audience means that you have to really understand where the audience comes from these are not people who've been following on instagram these are not people who've been buying your physical works at a gallery these are perhaps you know they haven't made the transition yet we are in a very very early market and having an early mover advantage means that you can actually, you know, uh, be first uh, or, or, you know, uh, uh, the first lot of people who are actually doing this, the OGs, like what they say now. <laughs> so, uh, so one of the best ways of doing that is you build up your Twitter following. A lot of what, you know, more than 50% of NFT traffic and buyers comes from Twitter because these are crypto native people who have who have digital wallets, who understand cryptocurrency. There are people who've been invested in this space and this space really has is not that old to say, I mean, really it took off in 2017. So we've had just about five years into this market and it is still new, it is still growing. And most of the people who are also buying are artists themselves because it's people like me who have cryptocurrency. It's people like, you know, Vijay or, you know, everybody else, Chantal who has cryptocurrency. So we love supporting other people. So it's us who is buying each other's works as well. And also people who see the value propositions of NFTs going forward. So what that means is there are different kinds of collectors. There are collectors who buy um, art just because they love it. There are collectors who buy art because they see it going up in value as the artist's trajectory progresses. 
And so they would probably keep the art for say five years, 10 years, two years, whatever, you know, and then they, if there's second, and then they would then second, uh, sell it in the secondary market. And the third category of uh, collectors is somebody who just likes to flip it. So they'll buy an entry level um, artwork from say an emerging artist or something that, you know, is there right now, which they think is a good price. And they'll flip it immediately in the secondary market at, at a profit. So that is something that, uh, uh, you can, uh, th those are some of the ways, you know, people have been collecting and uh, you can definitely, it's all about building a community around yourself because the more people who are in this community, the more people know about cryptocurrency, that's where the market is, that's where the market grows and that's where you have, uh, you know, uh, the ecosystem working um, favorably. So that's where you reach out to people. You have to build your Twitter following. There's Discord channels. People are on Discord a lot. And the community is mostly very, very supportive. You will be amazed at how much people are willing to just, you know, reach out a hand and say, you know what, I know this is hard, but I'm here to help you out. Just send me a DM. Let me just walk you through. There are people like Vijay who handhold people to open their digital wallets. I've been, you know, trying to explain to people what NFTs are. And one of the reasons why we're doing this workshop is so that more and more people get excited because when I started off, I didn't know whom to ask. There was no workshop like this, but, you know, and, and the mistakes that I made, like if I pay too much for gas or, you know, I, those little learnings that I had along the way, I don't wish that on anybody else. So I want to just make sure that, you know, things are uh, things are uh, easily you know approachable for a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons why I was very happy to onboard and explain about my experiences. So um, also, like, you know, so basically what technology or platform uh, do you use to create these digital works? I mean, I'm sure like the community would benefit from knowing what resources do you use? I use um, Procreate. Procreate uh, is the app that I use on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And I use Procreate. I use Adobe Photoshop. I also use After Effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. And I use my my trusty pen and ink, uh, or, or, or all my sketches on my on my on my sketchbooks like this. I'm always sketching. Yeah, I'm always sketching like this. So I'm always I always have something like this. I, everything starts off on a piece of paper or canvas for me. I then scan it. I take them to Procreate, and then I work on it. Or you can directly start on Procreate or 3D Max or Cinema 4D or anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be a digital media. It could be a photograph that you've taken. <clears throat> that is something very, very unique. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, um, you know, we'll hear from Vijay about what he's doing with his NFT, something very, very creative and unique as well. So, um, yeah, that's what you can do. You don't really need too much technology. You just need a computer and uh, you know to upload it and uh, and, and connect to your digital wallet and you can do it on any device and it's it's um, it's 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 not that hard just just need to you know you just need to figure out where you stand and how to do it i think the more we are learning about nfts the more we uh, feel like they're more inclusive uh, there's so much more freedom for you to either convert your um, uh, you know your artwork which you're doing with pen and paper into a digital platform uh, you know like uh, and then you can work on it further on a digital platform then convert it into an nft so i think the transition seems to be pretty like it sounds very daunting to begin with and uh, when we first had the conversation uh, i was i was daunted as well because i didn't understand and you know i think once that resistance kicks in and then you try to know more about it uh, that's when you start getting comfortable and i'm so glad that uh, you're here with us to uh, you know help all the artists uh, on our uh, listening panel to you know uh, know more about nfts so thank you so much ishita this was uh, this is amazing and now we we've understood that from ishita but now we need to understand the execution of it and very very fortunately we are i know it's uh, gives me great a uh, pleasure to introduce you to vijay kupchandani um a more a detailed introduction of course by him uh, by himself but you know he's uh, got a very strong background in finance he's a he's a serial entrepreneur with a decade of experience in starting companies across various verticals fintech has always been a keen interest so the transition to the nft market space uh, you know came very very naturally to him as well what started as a hobby is now you know he's a keen promoter of the nft space in the industry Again, Vijay is a very active speaker in all these social media platforms. And as Ishita rightly said, even the first time we spoke to him, he was like heads on giving us a full tour. Ye karo, wo karo, you know, look at that, look at that. And all these things are something that, you know, we don't know. We don't even know that these platforms exist. So thank you very much, uh, Vijay. 
let's hear a bit about you and then we'll hear about your journey okay so i think uh, you know you had a very good start uh, with you know having ishita speak about it because uh, you literally heard it from the horse's mouth because uh, you're doing this for artists and uh, artists can best uh, explain you know how their journey has been and ishita always does a fantastic job at doing that and that's also the reason why she is my bff uh, in the nft world mm-hmm. right so so about little about myself so uh, i'm a serial entrepreneur as you said uh, i've been uh, you know building financial products uh, for over for 15 years now i started my career uh, with cd bank uh, i was actually their channel partner for mortgage loans so i did that for like 8 years uh, up till 2013 uh post that i dabbled in technology so fin- finance and technology are like two of my interests so uh, i started building mobile apps uh, this was very early like 2012 2013 you know when like the entire mobile app ecosystem was just like shaping up and uh, a couple of my apps that i built actually went on to become the number one app on the apple app store uh, for multiple week and uh, that's when i got inspired and started a company called seven uh it's literally the number 7 seven uh in uh, 2017 uh where we started off to uh, we, i mean we set off to build uh, india's first and only uh, contactless payment wearable ring so it's a it's a smart ring that we're building uh which kind of sits on your finger and it doubles up as your credit debit card so in fact oh, wow. if you can see right now on my hand you're wearing it yeah does it work so, yeah it works that's amazing <laughs> so you can see this is like what we have built and uh, this has an entire printed circuit board inside and uh, complete electronics so that's a little about me and my journey and my and my startups uh with respect to uh, nfts uh you know this is uh, probably something which i have to give it to the lockdown uh you know that uh, it was because of the lockdown that uh you know it it kind of cornered people you know into thinking because you know Uh, things are not moving business is not not up no and uh, and life is like slowed down so this was around march i believe you know when uh, i mean i i i was active in clubhouse from february and around march i started seeing a lot of these nft rooms kind of you know cropping up and uh, i got uh, intrigued and i just stepped in so i i realized that uh, the underlying technology was blockchain and cryptocurrency so that's something which i already was aware of and then uh what people are doing is that they were telling you that you can now attach a art piece or a visual kind of a content you know to to a token you know which was otherwise uh, just numbers you know which sits in your wallet right so, so if you I'm were just, uh, yeah. if you don't mind i'm just going to try and break it down as you uh, talk to us so what you are saying sure. is that you know nft uh, we like you buy one bitcoin and that's yeah. a number that sits in your digital wallet Number one right. or half or point three or whatever it is that you purchase, yeah. but yeah. when you purchase an NFT for any value, there is an image that comes. The image of the artwork comes to your wallet. Right. That is where you are enjoying the display. It's not a physical exchange of artwork. Correct. Hmm. So basically, uh, I'll tell you how it is. You know, when you buy Bitcoin, even if it is let's say one Bitcoin or point zero one Bitcoin, right? Uh, if I buy zero point one Bitcoin, you buy zero point one Bitcoin. is the same value it's the same as saying that if you hold 2000 rupee note in one hand and another 2000 rupee in another hand and right. if this was if this was yours my this was mine and if we just swap this right you would be fine taking my right. 2000 rupee home and i i'll right. be fine taking your 2000 rupee home right but now this is this is what is called fungibility you know where it says that two tokens or two currencies are of the same denomination and they give you the same value right so you don't mind getting it swapped right now when you when you talk about uh, nft nft means non fungible token that means there is it it cannot be fungible okay or it, it has to be non fungible that means i'll give an example if if you have let's say a cricket bat i have a cricket bat yours is signed by let's say uh, sachin tendulkar and mine is signed by sunil gavaskar right now these are two different things you know i mean it right. will be different well, in terms of value values are different hmm. exactly because see if i if i value sunil gavaskar more than sachin you know i mean mm-hmm. uh, not to offend any sachin fans in our uh, audience here but just to give an example right so i i will not part with my bat because i'll say like i want this bat you know which is mm-hmm. you know, if you if you understand that or, or or for that matter if it is let's say a signed copy of a book 
where the author is the same but then they have written to anubha uh, you know and uh, they've signed and they've written a personal note for you okay and they've done the same for me at the same book convention but it's the same it's it still becomes different you know <laughs> so this is an offline example now with respect to online examples uh, what people are doing is uh, see token is nothing but something which resides as an identifier on the blockchain all the images and other things that we upload or which, which we call as minting you know which we mint they don't go on the blockchain they are basically sitting on a central repository or some server and this token is basically pointing a url to that image so whenever you basically see this nfts on any of the platform mm-hmm. understand that you are basically seeing this image which is getting called from a central server and it is not on the blockchain okay okay yeah okay. it's it's not very easy to understand but uh, just uh, just kind of uh, learn it slightly at face value like how you know i mean uh, i mean you know, when it comes uh, back to you again and again and you kind of recite it and you know hear it again and again you probably get that uh, much more better yeah right mm-hmm. so you need to tell me when you can see the screen we can see the screen okay so uh, i'll just take you through uh, you know this uh, platform called open sea you know for any anybody of our participants who are watching uh, this is one of the nft platforms which is open it when i say open means you can go there sign up uh, or maybe like connect your wallet and start minting there is no curation like a foundation or a, or a, or a non origin or a nifty or nifty gateway these are some of the other platforms where you have to apply and if you get selected you can start minting but here you can just go and start minting and uh, uh, you can you know kind of put a price to it and you can uh, share this link to your either followers or friends and they can come and just buy uh, nfts so just to kind of uh, give a little idea about the anatomy of this uh, this is the home page which basically features uh, you know kind of uh, an art daily on a daily basis where uh, open sea basically spotlights this particular artist and this collection so this is something which is uh, like uh, very very beneficial if you get featured uh, you can i mean expect to get uh, you know sales like you know your nft is literally flying off the shelf uh, if that happens and uh, if you scroll down you have exclusive open sea drops uh, you know which they kind of identify and they kind of you know give a spotlight they will give you trending nft collections you know and a uh, uh, little more information about how you can create a nft and there are more resources uh available here right and then you can also browse by category like art music domain names and collectible right so i'll touch upon uh, some of these things very briefly so if i just was to uh, right click on this and you know open this and show you what this piece is uh, i've already done that here so this is uh, a, a kind of nft by somebody called robin uh, it's titled as 2009 and what you can see here is one out of 10 which means that it's So it's uh, basically a uh, one out of edition of 10 pieces you know that is made so think of it like uh, how photographers click and photograph and then if they want to kind of process it they process 10 pieces of it or five pieces of it so that's called edition okay so here you can see that uh, this is this is owned by somebody called mondoir and by the way mondoir is actually one of the biggest uh, you know top uh, 20 collectors in the nft space so anybody in the audience who's looking to uh, you know kind of make sales uh, mondoir is your person uh, don't spam him uh, at least you know kind of gently nudge him online and uh, if you if you if your artwork is good he'll buy it and here you can see the trading history as to when it was created and you know when it was transferred and so on and here also you can see more from this collection so from the same artist what is can be what is that is this this person has built and is packed into a collection that you can see here if you right click the name of the artist or the collection here you will be able to see their landing page as in the description page where you can see they have made 1.2000 items and there are 94 owners and there is like almost 5.4 ethereum worth of volume that has been traded on their collection so far and this is their entire store think of it like the the web store of robin belge you know so and i can just is, go and buy these like if i'm a collector yeah you can and in fact you can do something like sort by something like maybe price low to high in case you want to see what's their cheapest uh, nft selling for and here you can see that uh, there is a top bid on one of these things but it's a auction but uh, if you want to just buy outright you need to look at the price 
So here in the price, you can see that it's 0.35 Ethereum. So this is their cheapest. In fact, uh, fun fact uh, is that, you know, you can probably see something like an 800 figure here. Oh, yeah. And, mm. yeah, and you wonder that how is it that 0.35 and 0.4 mm -hmm. has like 800 in between, right? So it's actually not uh, 800 Ethereum, it's 800 right. US dollar. So you also need to uh, take care and look and watch out for the currency that has been you know, kind of discussed here. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of scammers, what they do is they will uh, also, when they want to buy your stuff, they will offer you like in hundreds, but they are like in dollar and not in Ethereum. So a lot of gullible people have also ended up selling <laughs> their artwork for cheap because they didn't realize that this is not Ethereum, but it's some other currency. So they're telling me nothing who, uh, so now if I ask from the artist's perspective, I'm an artist, I've made, so when I have uh, created an artwork digitally, after that I have minted it. Yep. And I mint through these platforms or there are other platforms for that? No, no, this is a platform for minting as well as uh, okay. showcasing. I'll, I'll yeah. in fact uh, take you through the minting process also. All right, so, so then the store is, so then we arrive at the, this store. This is my store after I have made it, like any Correct. other online store. Except yeah. that, you know, the currency is crypto. It's all, yeah. it's, or it's, we saw one regular currency as well, whatever. Uh, and then who decides the price? Who decides whether it's going to be an auction? Who decides that I don't want to do an auction? Everything is decided by the artist. Okay. By the artist. So the platform has, the platform has no role in this. Today you are selling this for, let's say, 0.35. Tomorrow, if you want to plan it for 35 Ethereum, doesn't matter. The platform doesn't care. So I'll give an example. Let's say you are starting to sell off something. And then suddenly the artist, let's say, shoots to fame for some reason or other, you know, maybe it can be an offline yeah. event, which happened, you know, uh, uh, some, some PR event, you know, which kind of uh, shot their yeah. fame. Yeah. They can they can go back to their store and just like, you know, uh, double their value or, you know, make it okay. better. Doesn't matter. As long as they're comfortable and they are, they, they, they're confident that their artwork will sell, they can take whatever price they want. Are these prices, like, for example, if I'm an artist who's also selling like uh, on the regular market, so the prices should be similar or does the crypto does the crypto economy function completely uh, differently? For example, if I'm selling something for $100, then do I maintain equivalence in uh, the NFT world? So uh, actually there is no such standard rule. Uh, if you're mm -hmm. selling artwork offline for $100, you can even come on the on NFT and sell it for $1,000. You know, mm -hmm. nobody will question you. So Pricing is a very, very vast topic and it cannot be covered in, in even a few hours. Right. But a couple of hints, couple of hints that I can give to new artists is that, uh, you know, research the art, which is in your same league. Okay. If you, if you can uh, identify that, okay, this is something which looks very similar to my art or for that matter, the same effort has gone into it. So, so, so there is, there is a strict correlation between effort and and price. So if it has taken you, let's say eight hours, 10 hours to make something and that output is, you know, kind of shining and, and you can see that a similar artist from some other geographies put up something and they've been selling it. So what you can also do is you should research that when did they start, when did they start minting their first pieces and what was the price of their initial pieces when they were a nobody, right? So right. you you could start somewhere around that marker and then experiment, you know, as to how soon your pieces are going. And also one of the uh, big, big uh, bookmarks that I would want to give to you know everybody listening is that it's not necessary that the moment you mint here, it will start selling organically. You have to, just like any other offline store or any other offline art gallery, you have to promote your art. Otherwise it will just like a drop in the ocean, you know, and nobody will notice it. So, so if you look at Ishita, Ishita has been promoting her art and building the community, being an active member of the community, even helping other entrepreneur, other you know artists for that matter, uh, and and getting her uh, you can say space uh, created, you know, uh, cre creating her space uh, in the artist community and in the collector community. So yeah. that's that's something which is required. It's a it's a hard and very painstaking long process. So let let's not uh, give any false it's, expectations. It's similar to the whole artist grind in general. Yeah. Also. Then you know, yeah. of course, like you know, even even the regular uh, in the non NFT art market, you know, one month yeah. starts the artist resume. How how many exhibitions has he done? Where all is he exhibited? You know, all that defines yeah. the pricing. How many years you put into work? Have you been in auction? Have you got a prize? So it is a similar journey yeah. to be charted here as well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. So uh, I, w- I want to also kind of use this opportunity to tell people how to do the search on these platforms. So you have to use the top search bar and you can type the name of an artist uh, that you want. So let's say, uh, okay, one sec. So let's say there is this artist called Dario. Uh, Ishita knows about uh, him very well. Dario D. Siena. Uh, you can see that uh, when I type Dario, I get a lot of these uh, suggestions. So accounts are uh, just as the name suggests, they are accounts, you know, so they are not the collection itself. And the collections, you can see there is Dario D. Siena uh, digital, there is Dario, Dario D. Siena paintings, and uh, all the board app remixes and another units by Dario. So if you look at this uh, blue check mark, that's the verified collection. And uh, you get that, uh, you know, when you cross some sales volume on OpenSea, I think somewhere around 100 ETH or something. And uh, and, and, and to some extent, if uh, you're getting impersonated on the same platform, then you can write to OpenSea that, you know, I need to get uh, my art uh, preserved and some other, fa- you know, scammers are kind of trying to sell off my art uh, as, them, uh, as they are. So OpenSea kind of, uh, uh, you, I mean, you know, they help you get this verified. Oh, really? Okay. okay. And uh, if you see that, uh, you know, these are, uh, there is a certain art art form or, you know, aesthetic, which is, you know, common among all of these pieces. Okay. And there's a certain sensibility in his art, you know, which you can kind of uh, relate with. And uh, then you can see the prices. You can also see the last at which these, uh, these were sold. Okay. So that's also something which you can see. And uh, then apart from this, uh, Dario has also been recently working on a collection called Minds. So you can see this. Uh, this is like the evil devil goddesses of hell. Uh, that's what he calls calls them. And uh, you can see there are 62 items. You can sort them by something like recently created. So you you can see that you know which which ones kind of came in very recently. So tell me, Vijay, is it important and, for me to to create so many artworks at once to uh, like do collections? In that no, way? no. No, no, not really. So not really. just like if you see, if you see how Ishita creates her art, right? So let's let's do that. You know, uh, let's search for Ishita. So that's Ishita, right? And I'll just go and click her, click that. So the Minds collection that I was telling you is a is a proper collection which has similar uh, you know kind of uh, artworks which with slightly changes in them but uh, when i'm looking at ishita's work this is all mixed you know there is no direct correlation between any of her artwork you know they are all independent pieces correct and you right? and she has uploaded them as and when they have been ready i'm guessing exactly exactly mm-hmm. so let's say if you look at her recent art which is i think uh, you know interlace which we can see here so you can see that this one is uh, a five total. That means these are addition of five pieces. Okay. So this is not a single piece. And you can see that I think she's already made three sales. So you can also look at the trading history. This was minted uh, three days ago by Ishita. And it, see, you can see that uh, like a baby cradle symbol here. That means that it was minted. And there were five pieces that were minted. You can see five three days ago. And you can also see the time. It was July 20th, 2.34 p.m. Okay. It's very, very transparent. We know exactly when it was, you know, made. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So then it was listed by her for 0.22. And this was like one piece, another piece. And then here you can see there's somebody called PPS scam, you know, somebody three. They hmm. bought one of the piece three days ago. You can also see the time of their buying that what time they bought it. Right. And then you can see that there's one more piece which was bought by V staking. Right. Right. And I, th- I think Ishita is not probably listed all the five pieces, but uh, you can see everything that happens here in the term, in terms of the entire transaction history, the ledger is all here. Mm-hmm. If you want to uh, buy one of these pieces, there are two pieces that she's listed. Uh, the price is 0.22 ETH each, and it gives you a US dollar conversion also from Solkari Art. Now, if I was to buy one of the piece and I was to resell it, even my piece would start coming, you know, appearing in the same collection here. So I don't need to be worried about, you know, listing it somewhere else. It will get listed in the same uh, cluster, I would say. No, but uh, tell me one thing. For example, if you were to buy this, um, 
and uh, this uh, the like um, the whole amount goes to the artist or is there like a commission yeah so there is a 2.5% commission which uh, open sea takes okay so out of the 453 dollar 2.5% will go to open sea okay. so you can see that this is a a, a, a kind of artwork called minds by dario and uh, you can see the kind of summary here it says it was minted by dario 12 hours ago it was at 1220 okay this was 1220 am our time it's it's showing us our time mm. it was listed for 0.25 ethereum and it was sold to pat dimitri at 1224 right okay so this is literally in 4 minutes okay and now pat dimitri has put it up for 5 ethereum so so that's like 20 times the price okay and because why he do that the thing is yeah why he does that is because uh, this particular collection is uh, way too much sought after there are more than 1000 people who are interested in this and there are the supply is very limited just 62 pieces available so people know that this can someday become even 20 ethereum 50 ethereum so they are they are fine with spending like two or three ethereum right now which is like 10x the price at which dario is selling it because it is almost like the moment dario kind of you know drops this thing uh, he announces it on his discord channel so discord is also something which is very important for those who are listening in the audience that you need to be on discord because if you are in the nft community you want to sell stuff you want to buy stuff you have to be in the discord channels of all these artists what is uh, it? what mean, do you mean by that what do you mean discord channel so person? i'll show it to you so if i go to my twitter and uh, here you can see that he's put a link tree so link tree again is something which a lot of artists and people use to kind of you know uh, put in multiple links at the same time because twitter and these platforms they'll only allow you to you know put one link right so here you can see that the third link that is put is discord okay so i clicked on that and it is now taking me to the dario dcna discord but what what do you mean discord what does that mean discord discord is like a uh, slack or any of these you know uh, you can say communication uh, apps you know like okay. how you have whatsapp groups but okay. discord is more like you can have even uh, like 10000 10000 people be in the same group at the same time okay yeah it was it was originally uh, built for gamers to kind of communicate while they were playing but mm -hmm. uh, now it has kind of taken the fancy of the nft community also and a lot of Okay. Uh, business groups and other things also happen on Discord. So what you, what you mean to say is that when when I have put up something, when this fellow Dario decides to talk about this series on Discord and as in spread yeah. the word about it, then the price yeah. will definitely go up. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. What do you think? So uh, Discord is basically a communication channel, right? Yeah. It's a communication yeah. channel where a lot of NFT artists are talking about what they're doing. Correct. So when he starts talking about the work he's done, yep. when the word spreads about that, so yep. we're guessing the prices will go up. Yep. Yep. So this and is why even the, even the sale is happening. immediately listed out for four times. Yep. Hmm. Yep. So you can see if you, if you can see on the screen here, he's, uh, he's he's basically posted saying there is a mines auction running. Two hours left. Last bid is at one point two Ethereum. So he's basically not just announcing but also creating urgency. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in the in the minds of the buyers, mm -hmm. and this is this is what he, he keeps using it for all his promotion and you know, uh, drop. Are these open so, groups for anyone to join? Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's no invitation required. You just need to have your profile. Uh, let me just quickly touch upon uh, board apes, which is uh, something which needs a mention here. So apart from art, you will also see that NFTs is also about collectibles. Okay, so if you go to the OpenSea and Marketplace tab here, you can see new art, music, domain names, and there is this section called collectibles. So think of it like how you we used to collect uh, Pokemon cards or you know this uh, WWF cards or basketball, baseball cards that people collect, uh, and they are you know basically for different people or for that matter you know with different artwork and stuff, right? So you can see that these board apes now are one of the top digital collectibles uh, the floor rate uh, when i say floor rate means uh, people need to understand is that the lowest at which any of the board apps is selling is is called the floor rate of that collection 
So you can see that the flow rates on this, if I click on buy now, and there are 10,000 some odd species of this uh, in the collection. Uh, the flow rate right now for the cheapest board is like 6.79 Ethereum, which uh, roughly translates to around 10 lakhs in Indian rupees. So this is like wow. each of this image is like what 10 lakhs, right? Mm -hmm. And if you might imagine like, why did this happen? So they all started off selling at 10,000 a piece. Okay. When they, when they were offered to general public for minting, uh, and this was minted by an algorithm and not by an artist. So there is a website that you go to and you click mint, you connect your wallet and this just appears on the blockchain and it kind of lands in your wallet. So that's called, uh, you can say algorithmic minting. But you have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. That 10,000 rupees that I told you plus the gas fees. So when they launched, it was at that price. Now, why they have suddenly gained in momentum is because there are only 10,000 such apes and there are more than like maybe two or three million people who want one ape. Okay. okay. So when I say want one ape means they want access to the community and that kind of almost like a membership. So the value is not in the, in the, in the picture here. The value is more in the community. Okay. okay. And, and the then, ownership of it, the ownership is valuable. The ownership. Yes. And yeah. now if you look at this, there are, there are certain apes who have like red skin here, you know, and then some have you know, like brown skin. So then red skin people, or there are some apes, let's say thousand apes who are red skin. There is a separate community, which is kind of brewing in only for those red skin people, you know, and red just skin imagine. apes and they're like, you know, just imagine. So I'm just like, uh, then I'm just giving you a glimpse of the hysteria here. And I wanted to show you this image, which was posted, I think just today morning at 10, 12. So there was a, a LA meetup of uh, board apes uh, in Los Angeles, where these people, they've met for the first time offline, you know, and you can see on their t-shirts, they have this apes and they have this, uh, you know, kind of identity card and then, yeah. And then they have used Photoshop and morph their own apes on their, you know, kind of right. faces and they are just posting it on social media. Yeah. So, so this is like, you know, like it's, it's, it's a full, but like it's a, it's a collectibles club, you know, you want to be a part of yeah. it. So it's not, yeah. Yeah. well, one part is of course owning the artwork and one part is, yeah. you know, owning the access to a community Correct. or like, you know, some sort of an exciting symbol that, you know, I'm an owner of uh, this, yeah. Yeah. you know, one yeah. of those. So, so all that aspect is also associated with it, which is yeah. very much yeah. associated with traditional artwork as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. See, this is also similar to the o, o, the entire old habit of humans and, you know, it's on our DNA to collect. So, mm -hmm. you know, people like to be identified as, you know, owners or members of clubs, you know, that's something which is very ingrained in our DNA and we, you know, humans love to do that, right? So, right. so this is, NFTs is just one more way of, you know, kind of representing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Yeah. So let's quickly go back to the whole minting of an artist from an artist. How does that happen? Here. These are, these are my two collections. One is NFT names and another is like V2K gen. So uh, let me also just show you this, like, you know, apart from building the NFT names, I've also just uh, sketched something, you know, long back. And I just posted that also as an NFT, which was like a pixel art of uh, Taj Mahal that I had built. Uh, I mean, I made this on paintbrush in 2004. So I just like posted that also as an NFT. I'm not put it up for sale, but this was like minted five months ago. Okay. This is when I kind of almost started uh, learning about NFT and this was like my first NFT, you know, that I kind of okay. invented. Okay. Here, can you see this word button called add item on the top right? Right. So if I want to add an item to my NFT names, I can click add item. Now this is going to take me to a signature request page. So for people who are listening, this is perfectly normal. Don't, uh, uh, you know, panic or get worried that what this is. This is basically like a digital signature of the artist saying that, yes, I have only, you know, I'm only minting it and it's not by somebody else. So you're just basically authorizing this. So you click on sign. So this is the create new item page. You can Im upload images, videos, 3D models. And these are all the file types that are supported. You can see, uh, which includes not just JPEG PNGs, but also GLTF files, which are like 3D files. And there's a max file size of 40 MB. So just you have to be mindful of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can click to select an item. So what I can do is I can go to my NFT names and uh, I can probably 
try and uh, so already these things are minted but i'll just show it for reference so let's say this is a name called dwight so you have uploaded any so, file, any digital art file you have uploaded in all these above formats yes, hmm. yes. so i have these uh, uh, name kind of cards which were already generated using an uh, algorithm and they are now in my hard disk so i just basically fetch from that okay so just just for a quick uh, right see you can mm -hmm. see all this right so here are all these all these images i had created this was all created by code not by hand okay, okay. but so in case they are created so you could just scan them and do the same thing right correct 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 so this is dwight then i can put an external link so typically it is best that you put any of your social media links here so mm -hmm. you can put something like twitter.com slash nft names this is my handle you can put a description of this so right now in my collection i don't put descriptions because uh, you know names they don't require any description but uh, you can refer other artists you know what they do and you can put it here and in fact you can also weave a good story because this is the good real estate for you to also upsell the product you know over and above the art a lot of people they write uh, kind of you know what inspired them to build this and what they feel uh, when they uh, when they see this art or when they were making this art okay so this description is very important and then you have more attributes uh, which for artists might not be very relevant uh, so let me not just get into deep of it but uh, simple things that you can do is like you can go to properties and you can some type something like type you can say digital art something like that and then you can probably add stuff like software use is like procreate so these are things which will get added along with this nft in in the form of metadata and uh, if you are building a bigger collection like a massive collection and you want to identify that okay out of this 100 pieces 10 pieces were made in procreate okay 20 pieces were made you know uh, in a different software or for that matter uh, you can say motion still right okay? mm -hmm. or you can say something like animated you know mm -hmm. so you can do all of that but sure. uh, this is something which you should do if you are planning a bigger collection and you want to segregate and classify you know sort it yeah yeah, yeah. right mm -hmm. so in my case when i do my uh, nft names what i typically do is that will also give an idea that gender so let's say dwight as a name is a male gender right then i put something like origin okay so it's of english origin name so that these are some of the things that you can do got it hmm Okay. I think, uh, let's then here we go over this uh, Vijay now. Hmm. So, sorry, yeah. we have like a lineup. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Sure, sure, sure. So then here you can see supply. So there's one copy that you're minting. You're not making additions. The blockchain here is Ethereum. These are all blocks, and you just click on create. That's it. And the, the moment you click create, you might get one more signature request, and it's done. What about the fee? Okay. So the fun fact is, on OpenSea, you don't have to pay any fees for minting. It's called gasless minting. Okay, so there are platforms yeah. that allow for that as well. Correct, but if you go on Foundation, okay. where probably Ishita puts a lot of her work, mm -hmm. there you will have to put fees for everything that you do, for minting, okay. for listing, everything. Okay, so then you you can see what platform works out for you and. Uh, Correct. That. See, OpenSea is very okay. good for beginners who want to start off because right. there is no curation, there is no invitation required, or uh, you know, uh, there is no. uh waiting period and uh, all those all those stuff and plus there's no fees and other things required for every activity that you do right hmm yeah thank you very much vijay for this i'm sorry to have to rush you but i want to come back no, to no, no. all the questions that have listed out uh for you i'm going to hang on uh, you know hand over the session to amisha and chantru chantru uh, amisha please take it on and let's hear from chantru about his experience it's so great to see the works that you bring about um uh, you know and the and the way that you've turned it into an nft and um you know the the thing that i really like about santanu is that he's all about collaboration he's collaborated with a lot of people he's collaborated with adidas he recently did something with uh, rajasthan royals also that we will be talking about um and he's a brilliant artist as well um uh, and and santanu without taking too much uh, you know time myself i'd like to hand it over to you thank you so much guys it's, it's an honor to be here and uh, uh well 
I think my introduction is pretty much there on the PPT. <laughs> but I would <laughs> just like to <laughs> but I like to say uh, I I'm actually my background is engineering. Then uh, I got into art. Uh, it was sort of an accident because I never imagined that I'd be uh, like be an artist or a graphic designer as a profession. And uh, it was a tough turn. So I got into doodling, and this was my first step into art in the in the art world. So I took part in the Red Bull competition in 2014. I won the world a national round, and I uh, went to South Africa to part in the international one, and I won the international one. And finally, I won the international round, and I got my first ever contract with Red Bull International to design the limited edition T-shirt launch. Uh, which was Red Bull Doodle Art Special Editions. And uh, that was my first ever professional plunge into the world of art. And then since then, I've been just learning and growing. So, you know, how has the transition been like from, uh, from I think it, it was fairly uh, natural for you to transition to NFTs, isn't it? Yes, because see, I, I first of all, I, I belong from an engineering background. I was, I was doing mechanical engineering. I was already into technical stuff. Then I loved video games. So, yeah. uh, like, I love video games. Even now, I do a lot of streaming. I play a lot of uh, online battlegrounds like Apex Legends and stuff like that. So, I was kind of introduced in this world of NFTs at an, uh, at an early stage because whatever that I'm buying and I'm changing. On the uh, like in like digitally or in video games are essentially are the precursors to an NFT. Like yeah. these are tokens, these are special collectibles that you can buy or make transaction and collect them in within the digital realm. That is a video game. So yeah. for me, it was a natural natural transition because I was already intrigued by this concept of uh, accumulating things and collecting things online or digitally, and which really intrigued me and pushed me into uh, getting into NFTs. So let's talk about your collaborations now. You've collaborated with a whole host of people. You've collaborated with really uh, big names in the industry. Um, And uh, let's just see some of his collaborations. Um, Actually, no. First, let's talk about your inspirations. Can we uh, (laughs) take the slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I I know that uh, you were always very inspired by music as well as you were uh, as you were talking about. So tell us a little bit about your inspiration from where your art comes from. Uh, see, my inspiration uh, are like, uh, it's very, it's a broad spectrum. Like I might be uh, inspired of a musician or a music genre that I'm listening to. I may be inspired by uh, maybe just, uh, maybe, start, maybe an insect. But the thing is the, the style of work that I do or the kind of stuff that I do is mostly inspired of the black and white just contrast yeah. like i find contrast to be very inspiring and that's mm-hmm. why i've only, always like practiced with the medium of ink and paper because it's the perfect set of contrast and that is one of my primary inspirations is inking i love uh, comic book style inking and that's why i love mangas i love japanese manga because it explores so much in black and white and so much with inking that it's just a very, I'm drawn towards it. So mm-hmm. most of my inspiration or most of my style is inspired from Japanese manga and comic book inking and uh, a lot of pop culture and music. Yeah, so um, also tell me um, uh, if um, uh, we can look at some more of his inspirations, but while we do, uh, tell me <laughs> a little bit about your, um, your uh, work and technology and how does technology play an important role in a, an artist who's wanting to do an NFT or who's trying to turn into an uh, NFT artist? Like, what role does technology play and how do you manage it Like, uh, for, for someone to become an NFT artist? Uh, I think uh, you have to, like for me, uh, I'll, I'll explain this from my personal experience. I have to, like the thing is, we're so used to the traditional methods of painting and sketching and drawing that we easily succumb to the comfort of it. Yeah. Now, to completely get into the world of digital, you have to be at a discomfort because it's not organic. First of all, you have to break the barrier of thinking that, okay, this is organic, this is inorganic. You have to, you have to know how to compartmentalize both of the things. You, if 
and you need discipline for that. For example, if I uh, do uh, like I'm painting right now, painting this piece behind me. So if I'm painting that, I'll suppose I'll dedicate two three hours, uh, like suppose two three days on the paint painting, and maybe one day onto exploring the world of NFTs and digitalizing. It. So, uh, so you have to make yourself learn the process. So you have to start from the scratch. And the best way to do it is by first step is to not get intimidated by it. Like it, to, to a new artist, it might be very intimidating. Like, what is this? What is this new world? Will I be left behind? I'm not so, I'm not a digital artist and I don't know how to make, I don't know about crypto. Like Ishida said, you must start learning. It's not a one day thing. You can't simply just pick up a pen and start drawing or it's not like that. Like even, even your art, even if it's a conventional artist, uh, even your art form, it took time for you to develop it and be where you are. Similarly with this also, you must get a hang of it. And right now we have all the tools. Like uh, we have internet, we have laptops, we have phones. You just need to learn stuff. You just need to accumulate, do your research and uh, get into that zone. And then you must be also be very disciplined. Like suppose uh, today I, I'll, I'll have to force myself to sit and read, read about blockchains. I have, I'll force myself to read about, even though it might, I, I might find it boring. I'll read about the trending NFTs. I'll read about the new artists who are there, all the platforms. Do your research. So compartmentalize your hours into or inorganic and organic, analog and digital. And then you move forward step by step. And at the same time, I would, I would like to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Just because NFTs are trending and it's becoming big and it's huge, that doesn't mean that you have to go out of your way and destroy everything that you've created and start investing everything into NFTs. Absolutely. That's such a valid point. And uh, your practice goes hand in hand with... Uh, hand in hand with the nft like it was a natural progression for you but for someone who's just starting out what would be the first thing i mean of course there's a lot of research that you need to do uh but what's the first step uh, i think uh the first step would be learning how to digitalize your art because if you don't have a digital form of your art piece then there's no point in painting anything <laughs> at all so <laughs> So I think the first thing is to how creative can you get with the medium digital? Like, for example, you have canvases, you have paper. So consider this digital thing to be a new medium and how you can experiment around. For example, I can be someone who likes making videos. So how would you like translate those videos in form of art? For example, I'm painting a canvas or I'm doing a digital art. Suppose I'm doing something, an analog piece. Suppose I'm uh, doing a sketch. So how would I make it interesting? Like I can simply scan it at a high resolution and uh, upload it and mint it. But then the main thing comes, why would someone go and buy that art? Yeah. Somebody might animate it. Someone might actually uh, do some after effects and put some animation in it, put some music in it. That way you stand out. So now you need to figure out how will you stand out in I be true to your art form. For example, I would do it because my artwork involves a lot of detailing. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll do a time lapse. Yeah. I'll do a time lapse video. I'll and then I'll upload that time lapse video of me making an art piece on a sketch pad as an NFT. Maybe I collaborate yeah, with it's another a musician. Very valid point that you know how you can have an extension. That's yes. A very valid point. Hmm. Exactly. That doesn't devalue my work, it, and right. also it adds a value to my work because it's it's not the art piece. It's not a static art piece. It's a process in in itself okay. which I'm uploading as an NFT. So hmm. that way you need to get creative with the medium because you're you're mixing two mediums. It's not like that. Like you're uh, like that's why because suppose I'm a con because I started as a conventional artist and I moved to digital and then I moved to NFT, which was easier for me. But then. If you are completely starting from a, like an analog artist and you want to move into NFTs, you can't simply uh, like scan a piece of work, or click a picture and put it up. It's very, it's, it's, you need to stand out. And that's what I come in with collaborations. Like maybe you need to collaborate with someone to put in music for your art piece. Suppose you can mint it as a joint piece with that person. Like mm -hmm. suppose work with a music producer to uh, make a, a track for your NFT for that video process. And then you put it up because, and due to that, you have a much more engaging NFT piece. And you also have the audience of the music se uh, segment also. Mm. So that's how you collaborate and put stuff out. 
Yeah. yeah, so let's talk a little bit about collaborations and how NFTs are a, are a great place to collaborate with other artists. For Can we speak a little bit about your work that you, the first NFT that you dropped on Bazirex, which was uh, with uh, Ritwiz. Uh, yeah. What was the process behind it? How does a collaboration uh, of two different art mediums work? Like um, uh, you have to be on the same page, but at the same time, you have to bring something to the table. So can you tell us a little bit about collaborating art and music? So uh, the main idea behind, okay, I'll take this example. Like, the my first NFT drop with Vazirex was a collaborative piece with uh, Ritwiz, who has been a long-time client and a collaborator and a friend of mine. Uh, so this was our entry into the world of NFTs. And back then, uh, I, th- I don't think uh, Vazirex had the option of uploading music or like anim- animated stuff uh, the platform. So uh, this artwork was a sort of an announcement poster. So the collaboration yeah, this happened on to, World Music Day, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it happened on World Music Day. And it was an announcement that he made that he'll be long, uh, releasing 21 different tracks the next 21 weeks. And this mm-hmm. was the first, and it was the first artwork that we we're going to, uh, like this was the artwork through which he announced it and which was uh, also been minted as an NFT. Uh, so so I created the artwork. It was my visual representation of the music that was about to follow. And we already had a natural uh, communication because I had worked for about, for the past three, four years. I've worked with him throughout all the single artworks, all the album artworks. So we had a natural uh, li- liking towards, uh, uh, towards each other's style. So that way we dropped this first NFT. And the thing about this collaboration was that we wanted to get in an audience which was very new. So Ritwiz has a very, uh, like a, a fan following, which is very young uh, in the colleges. And uh, it's uh, not that highly invested into art and NFTs and stuff like that. Yeah. This is a mass, mass audience. Mm-hmm. So my thing was, I wanted to collaborate with him and get in the masses to know a bit about the NFT, give them an introduction. And accordingly, I had priced the uh, artwork at a very uh, reasonable price. I was I didn't price it at my standard Shantanu Azarika rate or anything like that. I price it at the rate where any fan could collect. So this was an experiment through which me, uh, him, me and him collaborated to create more awareness around it. And because of which there was so much PR around it, people started reading up on NFTs, people right. got on board on uh, Airwazirex and everything. And it was kind of an awareness thing. And it was uh, for me to welcome the fans, like uh, combined fans of me and him, into the world of NFTs and create awareness. Yeah, no, that that was that was a great piece as well. And um, I'd just like to know a little bit about how your experience with Vazirex is. I mean, uh, there are very less Indian NFT uh, places, right? So, how was your experience with them? Uh, and uh, it, like, what different platforms would you want to work with uh, as time progresses? So, uh, see. Uh, I am uh, like NFTs, like see, uh, my primary uh, source of income or my profession is mostly by other projects or the art that I sell or the other branding work that I do or collaborate to other brands. This segment of NFTs is an it's an extension, like you said, it's an extension of this. I'm still experimenting. With this. So for me, Wazirex was a good platform because uh, they had uh, contacted me to come on board. So I had a, uh, a relationship or like a partnership with them prior yeah. coming onto the platform. And because of that reason, it was a much more easier process for me because there were people to guide me, tell me okay, this is how to do the technical support and whatnot. But before that, I was already minting on variables. But then yeah. I uh, then I stopped doing it there because I was like, okay, I, this was like a homework for me. I got to know yeah, about yeah. how to connect my MetaMask wallet and the technical stuff. And then when I got the opportunity to work with uh, uh, like a brand like Wazirex, which is primarily Indian NFTs, yeah. I took that opportunity. I, I took that opportunity. I went ahead and I started working with them, minting with them. And then even now, I'm, I'm actually putting up very less work. Mm-hmm. Like I'm uh, like first piece was Ritwiz. The second one was an, uh, like another piece, uh, then third. So uh, I've only put up three art pieces, but I'm doing it a very like at a gap thing, like a monthly thing. Because yeah. I want to see how how 
how many it's variations okay. are the price points and the progression that I can be uh, going ahead and doing. And also at the same time, I don't want my art to be excessive. I've of never course, sold. Of course, you have to maintain that balance between yes. what is accessible and what's not. Yes, okay, so yeah, so I, we have I, some. I uh, yeah, uh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, like I, I, I don't like selling art films. I've always disliked selling art films. <laughs> So, so, yeah. so I'm always like I like my art to be like a more like a collectible thing yeah. rather than something which everyone can afford, like buy right. and get it. Right. No. Okay. So we have a few questions that we already had for you. So, as an artist, like, what is your driving force to create artworks? I think it's the uh, the feeling of working. Like, I like to sit down and experiment. Correct. Like, I like to see myself grow. I don't. I like it's entertaining for me. And to be honest, art for me is it's it's very humorous. I find it very funny. Yeah. Like it's something it's entertaining for me. It's thrilling. Um. Okay. So the next question that we have for you is: What's the key ingredient to make your artwork sell on NFT platforms? How do you attract collectors to bid on your works? See, for me, I already had a following. I mm-hmm. already uh, was working in this field. Uh, the people already knew about my artworks and. There were already collectors who were ready to like. Moment I got on NFT, that there's so many people asking me, like, when are you getting minting your NFTs? And so that was kind of easy for me. But for like like uh, the other panelists said, you need to be active on platforms. You need to be part of communities. It is very crucial that you have your community to support you. You are uh, like you be, be on Clubhouse, be on be part of the rooms, NFT rooms, and all. Be on Discord so that you know what's happening, what's going on, and people also know about you. You don't have to be like okay from day one. They, they won't be like hundreds of people knowing about you and ex- accept, accepting uh-huh. you in the community. You have to work your way into it, and mm-hmm. that's how it works. It's basically the same thing how galleries and the real physical artwork world mm-hmm. works. It's the same thing with this. You need to build a brand. That's how you will sell, irrespective of your in digital or your NFT or in like a physical world. And Santanu, how will you aspire young artists to look up to NFTs and you know how and collaborations? What what is your message to young artists who tuned in today? I think it's it's a new opportunity. It's a new platform. It's a it's a uh, it, it, I, I I see NFTs as a neutralizing agent because. Uh, there's so many gatekeeping happening everywhere around and so and there was no access to art or there were always galleries monopolizing the market and all. This is a playing field which is equal for every other artist. So I think they should take advantage of this opportunity. It's a very revolutionary platform. It's a revolutionary uh, medium, to be honest, which has come out. And you should be uh, like, uh, you should be opportunistic enough to actually see and study and yeah. invest in this team okay. and get to know about it and and you should explore this definitely explore this like as, as, I, as I think this is the future and you need to invest in your future and you must know what you're getting into and I think you should absolutely 100% agree um, Anubha so uh, I'm very happy to announce that our fourth speaker has joined us um He's not a, he's a face that's very, very familiar to us, uh, doesn't really need an introduction. Uh, we are very happy to have on board Vishal Malhotra, who has become India's first actor to have launched an NFT. Over to Vishal to talk about why he wanted to be a part of this space and what, uh, you know, what creating an NFT means for him. Thank you very much, Vishal, for joining us. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. So tell us about why did you want to create an NFT? What attracted you to towards it? Well, it basically started off as uh, something about two months ago where I was looking at diversifying my portfolio. Um, and cryptocurrencies was something which I had just heard of. Um, that's when I got onto, uh, I opened a clubhouse room and I started chatting and I was inundated by at least 2,000 people from all walks of life, from all over the world, who came and started explaining the, the, the nuances and the basics, actually, of the blockchain world. Um, that led me to get really intrigued and, uh, uh, you know, uh, started researching, uh, uh, had well-wishers who kind of joined in and uh, kind of started teaching me about the basics of what uh, the blockchain world has in store. 
and uh, when the entire nft conversation began it kind of resonated with me in a very very uh, big way because at heart i'm an artist i'm an actor so anything creative kind of rings the bell in a very big way with me so sure. mm. and that's basically how it started yeah that's great so then you decided uh, to come up with an nft of your own well no i started reaching out to artists and uh, uh, then i reached out to of course ishita who very very kindly accepted uh, uh, the invitation to collaborate with me and i'm forever grateful to her and that's how we uh, began the journey so that's how the first nft came out and the second and you, and are you planning a series um, uh, a bigger series of uh, nfts so yes i'm happy to announce that uh, i'm involved with uh, various amazing artists uh, my next three nfts are under production right now creatively and otherwise and um, hopefully if things go right by the end of uh, july or the first week of august we should have the next nft released that's great are you also looking at so one thing is that you know you've got a you've got an nft out uh, as a creator and a collaborator but are you also collecting nfts is that something that you're looking at doing and for young artists that you know are looking to sell their nfts what would you say to them absolutely i'm an uh, I want to. I'm planning to become an avid collector. Right now, I just own one NFT, which is made by Vijay. It's got my name on it, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people are very interested in that too. Uh, besides that, I, uh, of course, adore Ishita's work and a lot of other work which I'm kind of uh, shopping around and uh, looking at. But I intend to be an avid collector from the point of view of what resonates with me in the art more than anything else. And my message to um, to anybody who wants to get into the nft space specifically artists because i get this question a lot ever since i release um the first nft is um you know uh, uh whether i would uh, basically encourage them and motivate them to uh, to venture into this beautiful and unexplored yet nascent world and my answer is a resonating yes i'm mm -hmm. happy that it uh, i'm happy that it's resonated with people in general because uh, um it got a lot of attention around it and it's still getting a lot of attention and everywhere i go the first question is uh, congratulations uh, you know you've made history uh, uh, alongside ishita and uh, but what is an nft so i guess it's a conversation starter and i would say uh, there are a lot more people who are interested and who know about an nft than they were before so mm -hmm. Yeah, so that and that is exactly what we are hoping to do here as a group as well. I'd just like to congratulate both you and Ishita on uh, coming up with such a beautiful one. Like Ishita's work is anyway so pretty, and then you know we have you as well as a part of it. So congratulations on that, and uh, thank, thank you, you for being such a uh, great proponent of uh, NFTs because uh, it does also um, uh, play in on. how indians are now perceiving nfts how things are changing the sort of response we've had to this workshop has been phenomenal uh, which just comes on to goes on to say how much younger people and especially influencers uh, who take up nfts and uh, you know it's it's working really well for the indian nft market in a bigger uh, scheme of things you know uh, so congratulations on that ishita anshar thank you very thank much you. Uh, vishal for joining us So I think uh, that was a good. Um, thank you very much. I learned a lot today. It's definitely opened up new avenues for me. I hope it has done the same for all of you. Yeah, thank you, Anubha, for uh, uh, getting the conclusion in place so beautifully. And I think everyone was just nodding because everyone agrees to whatever you're saying. And when we uh, first thought of uh, getting an NFT. Um, nft workshop together i was absolutely clueless just had heard about nfts at some point and uh, pretty much like been resistant towards uh, trying to find out what it is because i was just like me bahut confusing hoga i shouldn't like i shouldn't go that direction because it's going to be very confusing but actually it's it's not that it's not that confusing uh, there is no need for an artist to be resistant so and thank you so much all you guys and uh, thanks to team artsam and team artbus to putting everything together um uh, thank you santanu for being a part of this thank you vishal for uh, joining us and ishita vijay like you guys have been so great throughout the planning of uh, everything and uh, really really thank you from the bottom of our hearts just one quick note uh, i always uh, tell artists like each of you who are doing so well in the space you've got santanu you've got vishal ishita everyone is just so true to their art like 
you can see it. That is why it stands out. If you want to, if you want to push your artworks, you just have to be true to it, whichever platform, whichever um, whichever thing you uh, try to take up in. So, so yeah, that's that's a good parting note. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>